From the end of the Viking Age, there is an economic boom going through Scandinavia, with an increased surplus production and an increased trade. And this is also visible in the inland areas, with a large-scale utilization of resources such as iron, hunting and trapping, and various stone resources. And the same period also sees the development of several marketplaces. That is places with a somewhat different function and location than the Viking Age town, <coughs> like Kaupang uh, near the Oslo Fjord. Now, marketplace may not be the best term as these places develop further towards a town or a proto town. But some of these places that emerge from the end of the Viking Age, they end up as important medieval towns, as Frode has talked about, while mm -hmm. others never become a proper town, but rather goes out of use. And this is the story of these places, like the failed towns. And I wish to highlight the importance of these places and explore the reasons why they eventually failed. Uh, in terms of structure, I will first outline the main resources and the commodities that were involved in the trade. I will then present the most important uh, trading places in Norway during this period as there are several important trading places, but only a few that survives through the Middle Ages. <clears throat> and I wish to dis discuss the possible reasons for this development and focus focusing mainly on the trading places or the marketplaces called Borgun and Kaupanger. Large parts of Scandinavia are forests and mountains. In other words, outfield areas. In Norwegian medieval laws, these are considered common land and, in theory, free to use and to be exploited by anybody. However, the common land was still mostly used by the farms neighboring the common land. And a lot of the commodities came from the outfield of the common land, such as iron, furs, skins, antlers, soapstone vessels and honing stones. Now, these have been exploited throughout the Iron Age. But it is at the end of the Viking Age we see a considerable increase in the, re in the resource uh, <coughs> exploitation and a, a massive regional surplus production emerges. And a major factor that enabled this development is the monetarization of the society and stable <laughs> economic networks and of course places of trade. The trade took place on a number of sites, and some of these meeting and trading places evolved into seasonal marketplaces or more permanent <coughs> marketplaces. And some, such as Bergen or Tönsberg, increasingly grows in size and importance and became important towns. And of course, while others do not, and we can, also, we can call them failed towns. Now, these are places that are less known today, but in the early and high Middle Ages, these were sites of high economic, high economic and political significance. And this map shows the most important places of trade for Norway in this, re in this period, and, and some of the resources and commodities that was included in the trade. Today I want to focus on the marketplaces of Kaupanger and Borgun. Now, these are among the most important trading venues in Norway that never evolved beyond the High Middle Ages. And as this map shows, you can see that Kaupanger is centrally located as a focal point between the inland resources and the populous areas of Western Norway. Archaeological investigations has uncovered charcoal, charcoal pits and a number of forges uh, at Kaupanger. And based on these finds, as well as the location, it is likely that iron was an important commodity at Kaupanger. Uh, in Sverre Saga, written at the end of the 1100s, the marketplace of Kaupanger is described. 
And although Kaupanger today is a quiet and small place, the saga paints a picture of a densely populated place <coughs> with merchants, stores of foods, saunas, and a developed harbor. And the organization of Kaupanger appears to follow a pattern that is also seen in other uh, Western coastal places, such as uh, Borgun and Bergen. Borgun was the largest marketplace in Western Norway, uh, then of course not counting Bergen. And a large scale excavation have been carried out, uh, although a complete publication is still missed. These excavations uncovered a thick cultural layers and over 300 graves from the early Middle Ages. And the excavation also showed several house remains. And the, the earliest house remains seems to be uh, lighter houses, uh, uh, but uh, when you come to the 1100s, you see more permanent and larger buildings. As well as the houses, there are remains of crafts craft production, such as metal, textiles, leather, and woodwork. And at the, the beginning of the 1200s, there are four stone churches at Borgen, and this alone shows the importance of Borgen in this period. But of course, everything comes to an end. And from the late 1200s, we see signs of an economic decline. For instance, around 1300, there is a marked fall in the iron production. So this is five decades before the Black Death and two decades before the famines. And this downturn is visible across large parts of Western and Central Europe. For instance, shown by a significant decline in the construction activity from around 1300. And this seems also to be the case for the marketplaces. From the first half of the 1300s, one of the churches at Borgun is close to a collapse. And in a law amendment of 1384, it is clear that marketplaces have more or less gone out of use. This photo is an excellent um, illustration of the collapse or the decline. And it's of a smaller boathouse uh, in, placed inside the larger boathouse connected to the Leiden. Looking beyond the high Middle Ages, we see that towns such as Bergen and Tunsberg increases in importance, while places like Kaupanger and Borgun lose their significance. <coughs> the fact that we see this decline over large parts of Europe indicates that we must look at major social changes. But of course, also regional factors are at play. With regard to Kaupang, Kaupanger, there is a shift in the iron production which makes Kaupanger as a location or as a marketplace less strategic. In the course of the 1200s, there is uh, an influx of cheap Swedish blast furnace iron, which seems to replace the iron that was produced in the Norwegian inland. This meant that Kaupanger lost much of its main economic basis and with that its political significance. Regarding Borgun, the increasing importance of stockfish, uh, so uh, dried cod, from northern Norway and the trade in stockfish from Borgun made Borgun less central. In addition, there was a trade political development that was less than ideal for Borgen. And especially that with the introduction of the merchants uh, from the Hanseatic trade, uh, Hanseatic merchants, and this combined with a weakening king. From the 1200s, the Hanseatic merchants based in Bergen became increasingly important in the trade along the Norwegian coast. And it is within this context we must see the Law Amendment of 1384, which I briefly mentioned before. The letter was written in Bergen during a period when the merchants from Bergen are being pushed out of the importing fishing trade with northern Norway. 
and the amendment divides Norway into economic spheres, each sphere with their own marketplace. And this must be, must be seen as an attempt from the king and, of course, the, the merchants, or Norwegian merchants, to prevent fishermen from northern Norway from sailing to Bergen and trading directly with the Hanseatic merchants at Bergen. Uh, I have actually modernized this amendment so you can better understand it. Thank you. <laughs> this is so sad. But this amendment is, of course, more or less wishful thinking from the king. For most fishermen, it seems that trade with the Hanseatic in, in Bergen was beneficial. The, this led to the Hanseatic traders quickly creating ties of dependence to Norwegian traders and fishermen. And along with the general economic downturn, this led to places such as Borgun lost its economic position and with that much of its political significance. So, to sum up, the failed towns, they mirror in many ways the socio-economic development from the Viking Age and the, and the High Middle Ages. Places such as, such as Kaupanger and Borgun had an important economic role in the regional surplus production. <coughs> Kaupanger connected Western Norway to the resources of the inland, such as iron or hunting products, but when these local resources much lost their significance and the regional surplus production decreases, Kaupanger loses its base of existence. At Borgun, it is especially the politics of trade that affects the marketplace. The Hanseatic become an important factor and the fishermen from Norway and the Hanseatic merchants moves outside Borgun and directly to Bergen. Nevertheless, the decline of Borgun and Kaupanger coincides with the general economic downturn in Europe. And the smaller marketplaces are not robust enough and are not able to adapt to this downturn and goes out of use. So in other words, we can say they failed. Thank you.